What's the goal? I mean, the goal is to be the best big wave rider on the planet, bar none. <laughs> That's it. Surf stance, surf stance. How fast is the water flowing over the foil? Go to fever, not through the skin. I basically grew up on an island and it became a part of my DNA, watching the best water people on the planet do their thing right before my eyes. It only seemed natural that I would adapt into that. His training schedule is like, I've never heard of anyone doing what he does. He's sacrificed a lot of freedom to stay focused on where he wanted to go. Now he's accomplishing that. He's always been a creative thinker and a kinesthetic learner. You know, movement is how he absorbs things. He has an internal level of energy that most can't even fathom. If you can keep up, you know, it's a, it's a unique experience. For me, I think it's chasing true freedom. There is true freedom in big waves because how can anyone regulate something as powerful as that? Um, and so when I get on those waves, it's just me and the wave and mother nature. And there's that human connection that I think we all have deep inside to connect with the world around us. And that's where I connect best is when the waves are really big. Hmm, where do I start? Now we of course, where everything starts. It's the 80s, Pops was a windsurfer. He came to Maui in search of the world's best waves. Lo and behold, he met another windsurfer. That's my mom. They had me. I've been in the water ever since I could remember. I love the water. I love big water. Over the years, I've done a few things, but this year is special. I can feel it. I'm more dialed in than I've ever been, and I'm itching to push myself. So, I'm taking on a series of missions this winter. I want to win big wave tour events. I want to take my foil into some giant surf. I want to do things on a surfboard that have never been done before. Yeah, I know. Big goals. Plus, I've got a few other crazy ideas up my sleeve. And on top of all that, we thought it would be rad to have a film crew capture everything that happens during my winter season. So here we are, episode one. I just got back from Oahu where I was doing a lot of surf training and the pipeline masters were on. And then you just get this call that the Jaws event's on. And it's funny because you train all year and you never know when it's gonna happen. It usually just catches you off guard. Like, okay, like it's on. Bring two tow boards. I think I'm as comfortable as I've ever felt for Jaws, but still the nerves are there. So that's the process. It's like, hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait. And, but before I know it, it's gonna be the morning and we'll be waking up at 5 a.m. and headed to the harbor and going through this roller coaster like I have the last four and a half years, five years now. The ultimate for me is to win in my own backyard at Jaws. Ty Lenny's going to get the entrance. Beautiful bottom turn. Pulls up oh high in a big barrel here at Pei. It's my home big wave break. It's one of the best big waves on the planet. And anything can happen. Flip the switch. You can have the best barrel of your life, or you can get absolutely just destroyed. And it's 
very uncomfortable when you do. Worst case scenario for Kai Lenny. Ouch. Oh. The Jaws Challenge is the one event that I want to win so badly. I've always loved competition. I've always loved big wave riding. And both of those things were born here on Maui. From the first day I saw surfing, which was at Jaws, to the first competition I did here in the islands, it's always been the place where everything needed to come together. Hey, point in attack, never look back. I'm a go full force. Bodies on bodies and floors. Turn them straight to a corpse. I will not show you remorse. Yeah, I'm a savage, of course. Cool up like 20D, bet we just might shut this thing down. If I could win out at this spot, it'll mean the whole world to me. That is my main focus, is take this event out and become the champion of Jaws. Oh, look at it. This, my friends, is Maui glass. And what that means is it's only 20 knot winds. <laughs> but man, it's, I think it's gonna be perfect tomorrow. It's kind of scary how perfect it's gonna be because that means you just have to put yourself in the pit. <laughs> yeah, so there's my boat. What? She's a giant jet ski. Hello, hello. <laughs> Knock everything over. He's so cool. <laughs> New friends. It's just me on the boat, right? Uh, yeah, I think you and Todd. And... Just like in terms of uh, athlete though, like boards, right? Oh yeah, yeah, just, just you. Perfect. Well, the anticipation is really almost killing me. Wanting to just get out there and do it is what I've been waiting for all year. So waiting one extra day seems like an eternity. I was training every single day, every day in the water, consistently working on my equipment and trying to come up with new ideas to have a better performance. Everything just seemed like it was falling in line for this winter season so that I could have the best winter season yet. But at every opportunity, I wanted to be out at Peahi or Jaws to do some training. And even if it wasn't giant and if it was windy, we would go out anyway. Whoa. But on this one particular morning, all the signs were pointing to no, don't go. But of course, we decided to go forward with the mission up to Jaws. But once we got there, we realized that the swell actually didn't really arrive. But whenever there is waves out at Jaws, they're still considered big. So I definitely got out there and was learning new maneuvers that I had never done previously and I felt so comfortable by doing them. Like, this is, this is awesome. I'm making huge ground right now. But when things went wrong was when I caught a left-hand wave and I rode it all the way to the end and I ended up falling. I got picked up by Victor Lopez. I jumped off the jet ski to grab the board. Victor looked at me for a second and looked back over and there was a big cresting wave and it ended up sweeping him off the jet ski and now the jet ski was ghost piloting. Things were wildly running out of control quick. The next thing I knew, a wave came in. I hopped on the jet ski. It started. OK, we're good. I go to hit the throttle. Throttle cable is severed. The jet ski was dead, so I was bailing. I leaped into the next wave. The carabiner hooked my hand, and in the process, just cut through my hand. Hello? Hello? Are you okay? Definitely not okay. No? No, I'm, I'm it out. Bad? It's bad. Completely shredded. Between my thumb and my pointer finger. It's just okay, okay. a major speed we'll bump. Okay, bye. Bye. I thought my winter was absolutely over. But within two weeks, a lot of positive thoughts and good treatments, I was able to bounce back and fix this old hand of mine just in time for the Jaws Championships. When the call does come through that, hey, in three days, the big wave competition at Jaws, it's on. Yeah, sure, in that moment, I would be ready to just jump in there and let's do it. But you have three days to think about it. 
and in the process everyone's talking to you about it's gonna be the biggest ever it's gonna be so gnarly this the wind's gonna be like that and in that whole kind of like swirling around it's almost exhausting i'd rather just know the day before and just go out just the exhaustion of having to imagine big giant waves and potentially getting eaten alive but that being said every time that i end up back in the water after those long days of waiting it just seems like i'm at home i think if you learn to accept it and enjoy the process um, it doesn't affect you if anything it gets you amped being willing to put yourself in a position of real harm it's like walking out to the road and knowing you're going to get hit by a car hunt create space sense look left feel for the swell know what the tide's doing if it's dropping the swell's picking up Get never sit. Move. Never Dra sit. Drag, huh? drag your prey across the lineup. Everything seems set. My mindset is there. I know what I have to do. Now it's just whether the waves will cooperate and come to me. First thought when I open my eyes in the morning is, let's do this. We're all at the harbor launching to go up to Jaws for the contest. It's pure chaos. I got a radio for you. I don't know the channel. The channel. People are amping. People that aren't in the event are like talking to you. Oh, I heard it's going to be this. It's going to be huge. And you're just like trying to launch your jet ski and boat and stay focused. There's lights. People are filming. And everyone's just amping to get out there. best moments when you're coming around the corner, you can see plumes of spray going 150 feet in the air. You start seeing these boats and jet skis in the channel and you realize, wow, it's on. I think that's the moment where I get the most excited, scared, everything all at once. It's like these emotions start flooding in. Look at that barrel. Oh my wow. God. Wow. Whoa, so makeable. Oh my gosh. Had they taken off deep and packed it? It's big. It's really big. CBD MD Jaws Big Wave Championships, it is on. It's the perfect day I've been waiting for. My performance is going to be stellar. Everything my son does is dangerous. It's really dangerous. When we're on that boat, it's focus. I caught that super Horizon yeah. Zone 3, right side. Piahi is happening which translates to 50 feet on the face pretty much consistently. Oh, Jamie Mitchell! Oh, going over! Check out, Kai Lenny drops into this monster. He made the drop, get hit in! Pulls up high in a barrel. Oh. Contest is on, the anticipation is really almost killing me. Wanting to just get out there and do it is what I've been waiting for all year. If there's one event I want to win more than anything in the world, it's this Jaws Championships. If I could win at this spot, it'll mean the whole world to me. Oh my gosh. Wow. Oh my gosh. They say context is everything. I totally agree. But let me provide a little context. Here we are at Peahi, the place I grew up big wave surfing. It's game day. The CBD MD Jaws Big Wave Championships. This is the event I want to win more than anything else in my life. It's my fifth time competing here. I've never won it though. I've made it to the finals twice. And last year, I came in second. I was so close. I could taste it. Mmm, that trophy. So here we are again, another chance at it. It's just me, Peahi, and a bunch of badass chargers. 
who also happen to be the world's best big wave surfers, standing in my way. Let's go. You better buckle in. The CBD MD Jaws Big Wave Championships, it is on. Next Right off the cliff right here. Piahi is happening. It looks like it's gonna be a fantastic day. A solid 20-foot Hawaiian with a couple 25-foot sets, which translates to 50 feet on the face pretty much consistently. That's my call. First heat, as the competition's about to start, the nerves sort of start coming up competitively. You can feel those butterflies, and it's like, okay, I hope in 45 minutes I can catch two waves that will be able to beat some of the best big wave surfers on the world. Erky Russell, the young man out of Australia, scary off the bottom, in the barrel, traveling through there. Big spin for Russell Erky, and success. Jamie Mitchell going for it. Oh, wow. Jamie Mitchell! Oh. Going over and down! That was a trip over a giant waterfall. There he is. Well, it's good to see he's made it back to the surface. He was able to claw his way onto the rescue sled. Oh, oh, until his board ripped him off. Uh, Jamie? Oh! Do you see Kai? Oh, he's on the boat. I always try to just approach it in the most positive way, thinking right on. It's the perfect day I've been waiting for. My performance is gonna be stellar. There is a real calm to going out there. It's like all of a sudden, okay, I know what to do. You know, it's just focused. Second heat of the day is out in the water. Kai Lenny and Ian Walsh making this six surfer field. Check out Ian Walsh dropping into this one. Former champ out here completes his first ride. This is Will Scootin. On the backhand, grabbing the rail and takes the hatchet to the dome. Mark Healy going left. I mean, it's the first time we've seen this wave and less a bit different, but speeds down the line. And you feel like you're on the shoulder and all of a sudden you're not. I get asked more than anything, like, does what he does scare me? I kind of feel stupid saying it, but it doesn't, you know? I'm so comfortable watching him chase these giant waves, and I know how calculated his decisions are. He's not doing it for the ego side of things. He's not gonna just hack himself over a wave just to get biggest wave, you know? It's, he's doing it because he loves it. Here comes something. Kai's paddling to the West Bowl. Oh, here comes something. Go, Kai, go, go, paddle. Get in it. Oh, there he goes. Oh, he's up. Kai Lenny drops into this monster. He made the drop. Get pin in. Pulls up high in a barrel. Sierra 2, let's go. Last slide, last slide, last slide. Sierra 2, let's pick up Kai. Let's take him to his drop off zone. Sierra 2, I copy, yes. You don't just decide to paddle out to Jaws one day, you gotta train for this year round. And the Big Wave Performance Camp is one of the key parts of my annual training regime. OP, can we get eyes on Kai? Right now I'm unconscious as a drill, so I'm not going to raise my hand to them and uh, I'm basically going to have to force them to try to like bring another person to carry me on top of the jet ski. So here we go. Okay, all Sierras, here's the situation. Unconscious surfer down. Kai's in zone three, right side. Zone three, right side. Hey, 
Everything my son does is dangerous. It's really dangerous. It's damn right serious. And so when we're on that boat, it's focus. Surfing big waves is dangerous, and that's also partly why it's so exhilarating for us. But inevitably, bad things are gonna happen. So the better you can prepare for those bad situations, the better you can try to neutralize them when they do happen. Good morning. It's been a huge week. Big training day today out at Piahi. Objective for today is two things, repetitions, and clear, concise communication drill between the entire team. And the reason we wanna get that done is our primary objective is when the athlete gets on the wave, there's no question that we can pull every single athlete out of the surf zone as fast and as safely as possible. Every Red Bull high performance camp that I've done, I've learned some incredible things. And this one in particular is no different. If anything, this is the greatest one yet because the stuff that we're learning is pretty crazy. This particular week, we were heavily focused on communications. We we're heavily focused on high stakes, high stress environments. So the natural solution to that is to bring in some staggering talent from the special operations community, people who've pushed the edge in the toughest environments in the world. We then sort of bring best in class behaviors from the military group. We modify that so that it fits in with the community of big wave surfers, and then they are able to extract the best parts of it out. Okay, let's go. Exercise, let's do it. To be at a point that I get this really valuable information that will take me to the next level. Hey, I'm all open because I just want to be the best I could possibly be. Smile on your face, now switch up. Speed right past that switch lane. Switch up, switch up, switch up. Ain't, ain't nothing new, just during day. Move slam, move slam, move slam. Money go green on the move ring. Low key chilling with the boot thing. I've been getting money in a new thing. Pull up with 500 horses. Right off the boat, it's a foreign. Right off the boat, and she gorgeous. Haters so mad, they got torches. Big bag. Stay for the dough, yeah, get cash now. The biggest takeaway from the entire camp is just being prepared for every situation. One of my favorite sayings from the whole thing was, be ready for the perfect scenario, but prepare for the worst. Not falling back on luck or succumbing to fear. Instead of rising to the occasion, you fall back on your training. And I think that is gonna be what changes the game in big ways this year. Here we go, speeding in through some frothy water. Do they have him or is he, oh no, he just ducked, didn't he, under? Yeah, I don't know if he has his part. Have they got Kai? They've got Kai. They got the board. Yeah, they, have they have the board. board. Yeah. Thank you, copy that. One wave being ridden by all of our competitors. Kai Lenny, Ian Walsh, and Nick Von Rupp moving into the semifinals. We'll be back with heat number three when we return. Good job. So hard out there. Kind oh, of a slow heat. Did I make it? Oh, yeah. You want Randy? Make anything. Got so pounded on that one. 9.4 for that one. It's pretty big for not making a wave. I made it, and I thought I was fully going to, but the shock wave hit the tail and I lost all my speed because it grabbed it. And then I was, it was just over. It's funny because I had no idea what was going on the entire heat. I had just gotten flogged on a huge wave, broke my leash, got pounded, pretty disoriented. In that time, there could have been all time rides and I could have had no idea. And so I didn't know I advanced, let alone won my heat. It just went to show how difficult the heat was based on the conditions were so treacherous and how hard it was to get more than one wave. But that's big wave competition sometimes. It can be the wave you don't make that gets you through to the next heat. We are into the semifinals. Top three surfers moving on into the finals. Makua Kai Rothman's out there in the white jersey. Kai Lenny, a top performer out here in the black jersey. And Ian Walsh, a former winner here, is in the yellow jersey. When you're in the heat and you look around and you see the best big wave surfers in the world and each one is really good at maybe one particular facet of big wave riding, it can get into your head easily. But the trick is, is just knowing what you can do and not focusing on them. For a second, just be like, I know what I need to do. 
I know how I need to ride. This is what I got to do, and that's all I got to focus on. Coming in hot, Kai Lenny scratching into this one. It's going to be a late drop for Lenny. Long line down the face. Kai controls it and hangs on before getting bucked off by a mountain of white water. Kai Lenny fin drifting down a drop, skipping all the way for a finish here. He's out in the lead and will continue to be in that position. He is, uh, like you said, in total control, even when it's just the last inch of your tail is touching the water. The common thing, I, I'm asked this, what, what are Kai's goals? How, what does he want to do? Will he be happy with third? Will he be happy with second? No, no, no. He, he, his objective is let's win. He is dedicated. He is disciplined so that he can win if he's in a competition. If he gets second, we don't have a celebratory party because Kai really wants to reach that benchmark. And, and this thing is full commitment. We're ready to win. Kai looks like he's in compete mode. Kai Lenny, the little progressive approach, medium-sized wave, gets a top turn in. He's putting himself in the right place and giving himself multiple opportunities. Ian Walsh dropping into this one. Oh. Tippy toes there, but gets blasted on the bottom. Ooh. Now, the inflation vest comes into play. Makua stalling and surviving. What a bomb. That is a massive wave. And then right here, just skirting it by just millimeters. Literally, his back arm touching the wall of water. And he loves it. That feels good. The veterans on to the final. We have our first three finalists set. Kai Lenny out of the lead, followed by McCool, Kai Rothman, and Ian Walsh. In the final. Stoked. How was that? Good. Uh, that was the start. My boy. Yeah, well, I'll just do that again. I hope you're strapped in because it's finals time. This is for all the marbles. Six surfers on the water. One's going to be a champ. And this is a final that we have been anticipating. For the finals, it's a sense of relief that I got that far, but it's also where the most pressure hits. It's like, okay, this is the time to perform, and this is the time to put it all out on the table. When that big one comes, go, no matter what. Of course, who's going to be kicking and scratching on the first wave? Billy Kemper off to a quick start. Negotiates the drop. Long bottom turn for Kemper. Looking for the barrel, finds the barrel, finds an exit, and Billy Kemper with a strong start. I think Billy's my biggest competition and everyone else's biggest competition out at Jaws. He's one of the best, if not the best, big paddle and surfer at Jaws. He's won almost every single event except for one. He seems to have the place on lock. Waves always seem to come straight to him and he gets all these incredible rides. Whatever he's doing, he's figured it out and I know everyone's rushing to dethrone him. Who's in the spot? Anyone? Go Kai, go, go, paddle, paddle, go! Talked about Kai Lenny, how he's going to be dangerous in the final. He's up and riding, carbon off the top. Brilliant control. Kai Lenny making it look easy here at Jaws. Woo! Jumbo. Oh. Falling from the sky. No. Falls. Ian Walsh sending it down the drop. Bottom turn right in the pit. Incredible ride. This is going to be Kai Lenny gliding effortlessly down a giant wave face. Top turn for Lenny. And he negotiates that, but the white water just clips him on the corner. All right, so Billy has taken a very big swing. I'm kind of looking to see if Kai Lenny's going to take it up a notch. This is when all the money's on the table. This is when legends are made. Down to under a minute, 57 seconds. Oh, this is it. Who is going to turn on this hero wave? Go, go, go. Do it. Come, Come on. on. On you the can corner. Make it. Couldn't get wow. in. Historic accomplishment. Billy Kemper making history as a four-time Jaws champ. Oh, uh, today was a lot of ups and downs. I just never felt like I could find my rhythm. The whole contest, I felt like it was my event to win. And uh, just in the finals, I got some ways, but I just could never be in the right spot. And it was so frustrating. 
Oh, there's nothing worse than losing a contest out there again. We all knew what I needed to do, and I didn't do it in the way I wish I could have. You know, without a doubt, it's like absolutely frustrating. In my weakest moments, I would feel like I'm not a worthy big wave surfer if I can't win at my home spot, a place I spend so much time, but that's not the way to think about it. You gotta take your losses like you take your wins and realize that there's a lot to be learned from losses. So just look in the future, I have some clear goals. Win the Jaws contest next year and do whatever you can to train so you can give yourself the best opportunity. I'm so far down this road that I wanna keep chasing it. Like I can just see this carrot at the end of the tunnel that I'm like almost there, the light is there. That's what I'm telling you, Kai. <laughs> Right now, I'm headed to Nazare for some of the biggest waves on the planet. I'm just so amped. Nazare, the scary beast in Europe. By coming here and surfing this place over the years, I've been confronting the greatest fear of all, which is drowning and total destruction. It's crazy to be teaming up with my most competitive rival. You know, what can two of us do together as a team? I think the plan this morning is grab the hydrofoil, give it a whirl. It's like building the Formula One of foils for the best ride in the world of Formula One. Taking a hydrofoil and potentially riding maybe one of the biggest swells ever, that would feel amazing. The challenge for Kai is the speeds at which we can properly go with this foil is something that I don't think anybody's ever experienced. So we're gonna find out.